Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem for this building we can reach. We're given three parameters. One is a heights array. It's gonna represent the height of each building in order. So you can see we have an array like this. So let's say the height of this is four, this is two, this is seven, et cetera, et cetera. We're also given two more parameters, bricks and ladders. The idea is that we start at the beginning here. For us to move to the right, we have to either climb down or climb up, or maybe even just walk straight. Now, if the heights of the building, like the next building is lower or equal to the current building, then we can pretty much walk there for free. So these are the bricks, pretend like they're not there for a second. We can basically make this movement for free. Once we are over here, for us to now move to the next building, we have to do something to climb it because there is a difference here. And that difference is gonna be seven minus two over here. So that difference is five. So we have choices here. We can either use the bricks and for us to use the bricks, we would have to use as many bricks as that height differential is. So we have five bricks remaining, so we can choose to use those five bricks to then move to this spot. But we have a second choice, actually. We can also use a ladder. A ladder is basically gonna allow us to climb any height, no matter how big it is, we just have to use a single ladder and we can climb this. If it was 100 or 50 or 500, we could have also climbed it with a single ladder. Knowing those are the rules, we want to find the building, the index of the building that we can reach the furthest. I phrased that kind of poorly, but basically the furthest building we can reach. And if we possibly make it to the last building, then we'll return that. We can't go any further than the last building. So the way I described it, thinking about it in terms of choices, you might think this is a recursive problem, and then maybe we can add caching, maybe we can make it full on dynamic programming, and that might actually work. You can see that the parameters we'd be keeping track of probably would be I, the index, the number of bricks remaining, and the number of ladders remaining. That's gonna be three parameters, but there might be a better solution. Just thinking about this problem, the way I described it, a ladder is kind of like a superpower. Where do you think we want to use the ladders? Probably on the maximal differentials, right? Okay, but the only problem is we don't know where those max differentials are. Like at this point, how do we know that this difference of five is gonna be greater than the difference that's coming up? which is two. Actually, I think it's three, but that's not uh, super important. But again, yeah, how do we know that? Well, I guess we don't. So what can we do? Well, maybe we can keep track of the max differentials that we've seen so far. And then when we get to another differential, we can, in a sense, rewrite history. We can say that maybe over here, we decided to use a ladder, but possibly there's a difference over here. Now that's 30. We don't have enough bricks to go through this 30. So what we will say is actually we decided to go back and use bricks back there. And now here we're going to decide to use the ladder. So that's the idea. Now, among all of the diffs that we've seen so far, how are we going to organize them in such a way that we can get the max? max diffs. Well, probably a heap is going to be very useful for that. Heaps are a sort of sorted data structure where adding and removing to the heap is going to be a log n time operation, depending on the size of the heap. So that will allow us to solve this problem. You can kind of tell without even knowing exactly how to code up the solution that if the size of this is n and we're going to be doing a log n operation every time, in the worst case, the time complexity of that is going to be n log n, probably better than the dynamic programming solution that we would have had with several variables. So now that we kind of know that a solution like this is possible, how exactly are we going to implement implement it. Well, I specifically mentioned a max heap, but it's actually possible to solve this problem two ways. One, either with a max heap or a min heap. And the idea is this, we can either use bricks every single time. So anytime we find a difference, we decide to use the bricks as long as we have bricks available. So here we'd use five bricks. And then to go from here to here, we don't need to use anything. And then to go from here to here, we see we used five bricks. We had five bricks, so now we have zero bricks. We don't have enough bricks to do this. And so far, by the time we are here, we would have had five within the max heap. And now when we get here, even though we don't have 
any bricks remaining, let's say bricks is equal to zero, we're still gonna take this difference of three and subtract it from the brick. So it's zero, we're gonna minus three from it. Now it's gonna be negative three. We're also gonna take that difference of three and also add it to the heap. And at this point, what we're gonna do is say, do we have any ladders remaining? Because bricks has gone negative. That means we actually can't make this jump. We tried to make this jump by doing these calculations, but we realized that since this is negative now, we could not do it. So now we check, do we have any ladders remaining? Yeah, we actually have one ladder. So now among the differences that we've seen, among five and three, which one of them is bigger? We want to pop the one that's bigger and use a ladder on it retroactively. That's exactly why I put them in a max heap because now we can remove the five and with removing a five, we will say that's where we used the ladder. So if we use the ladder on five, we can go ahead and add five bricks back to this. So that's the idea. You can obviously see that this could be extended to cases where we have far more than just two values in the max heap. And the reason it will always work if we have at least one ladder is because we're always gonna use a ladder as soon as the bricks went negative. If they went negative by subtracting a three, at the very least we know we could have used a ladder on that three, or maybe we could have used a ladder on an even bigger number. That for sure is gonna bring the number of bricks back to at least equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero. So that's the solution and that's actually the easier solution. So that's the one I'm gonna code up. But very quickly, I wanna show you that we could have also done this with a min heap if we actually thought about the problem in the opposite way. We think about the problem from the perspective of every time we see a difference, we decide to use a ladder on it immediately. So at this point, we'd keep our five bricks, but now we'd have zero ladders. So I'll even write that down here. Now we have zero ladders, and in this heap, this min heap, we're gonna add five to it. So now going from here to here with a height difference of three, we don't have any ladders remaining. So at this point we check, is this height greater than the minimum value from the min heap? Because if it is, we should probably use the ladder here rather than on the five. At this point it is not. So we do not use the ladder here and we decide to just use the bricks because we do have enough bricks remaining. So here the height difference would be five since we used three, we'd have two bricks remaining. And to get this height difference of five, we'd check, we don't have any ladders remaining. So maybe we can check if this height is greater than the minimum from the min heap. It's not though, since they're equal. So it wouldn't make any sense to use the ladder here versus having used it there. Then we check, okay, well, do we have enough bricks remaining here? No, we do not. So we can't really go any further from here. In my opinion, this solution is just a bit more complicated to reason about, which is why I'm gonna be showing you the previous max heap solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare the heap, and we want this to be the max heap of bricks used. But Python doesn't have a max heap by default, so we're gonna get around that by only pushing negative numbers. This is really a min heap, but we're gonna work around that by taking every number that we push to it, making it negative, and then when we pop from it, we're gonna make it negative again, which will turn it positive. I guess it'll be easier to show when we're actually doing it. So for now, let's go through all the heights. So we're actually gonna do length of heights minus one, because from I, we're gonna be checking from this index, can we move to the next index? So to get the difference, which is what I'm gonna do first, is say heights of I plus one minus heights of I. And if this difference is less than or equal to zero, we know that we don't really have to use any of our resources. We can actually just continue to the next iteration of the loop. If that's not the case though, then we're gonna do what I said. We're gonna immediately assume we're using this many bricks. Then we're gonna push that to the heap, heap q dot heap push. Before we push, we're gonna make this diff negative. Now, at this point, we're just assuming Every time we get to a diff, we add it to the min heap and we use it from our bricks. But at some point, it's possible that bricks is gonna become negative. That means we used too many bricks. So that means we actually weren't able to make the jump from I to I plus one. So to actually make the jump now, 
we are going to check, do we have enough ladders remaining? Is ladders greater than zero? If it's not, if it's exactly equal to zero, then we return. What are we going to return? We're going to say we weren't able to make the jump from I to I plus one. Therefore, the furthest we could reach was index I. So we return that. Now, if that's not the case, then here we say, OK, now it's time to actually use a ladder. Let's decrement the number of ladders. That means we're going to save the max value that we can find from the heap, the number of bricks we used for the maximal jump. So we'll say heap Q dot heap pop from that max heap. This is the number of bricks we are able to save by using this ladder. So we can say bricks incremented by that. But remember, since we added it as a negative, when we pop from it, let's also add the negative sign here. This is just a bit of like bookkeeping that you need to do when working with a max heap in Python because it doesn't really have max heaps. OK, now it's possible that we actually end up going through all of the heights and we don't end up executing this return statement at all. So what do we return out here? Probably the length of heights minus one, because that means we were able to reach the last building. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.